this bottle here has approximately 100 times the amount of water here. Now let's forget about, a second, about the containers for a second and look on the quantities. Uh, the water in these two bottles is actually healthy. It is easily accessible. You had that experience during this event. And the taste is fundamentally similar. There is only one big, big difference between the two, and it's this bottle of water is incredibly more expensive than this amount of water. Now, if you uh, take that from the source, it's easily understandable. If you, for instance, uh, uh, take into account some water rights negotiated by water companies and communities in India or California, for instance, they will be able to get 150 liters, five big bottles like this, for less than a dollar and they will sell one-third of a liter for over one dollar. That means that the price of the water in this lit bottle is approximately 450 times more than what they pay at the source. Now, some people think that these fat profits are a bad thing, and as a matter of fact, we should stop drinking bottled water entirely. Personally, I don't think that sermonizing people is the best way to uh, affect environmental policy change. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's, there are other ways. And one way that I find more us useful is to link water as a luxury to water as a real problem, access to water as a human need. Now, the idea that I would like to propose here is simple, is to raise a small tax each time that we purchase a bottle of water in a developed country, the proceeds of which would go to ensure access to water as a human need, and not just access to water as a luxury. Now, let me tell you in more detail why. OK, first, water is scarce. Everybody knows that, but just for a refresher, 97.5% uh, uh, of the water is salt water. It's just a sea. We only have 2.5% uh, uh, percent of fresh water in all the water in the world, and most of it is locked in the form of ice. So it is unavailable. So we have to uh, you know, survive with whatever is left, which is 30% of that 2.5%, which is mostly in the form of groundwater. Now, if you take into account that to produce one bottle of water, you need uh, three to four liters of water extracted, that gives you a first idea of the environmental footprint of this industry. Second, water is still an unfulfilled need. So we, of course, have access to water, plenty uh, of access to water in our homes, in bottles and so on, but a bit less of the population in this world have no access to water in their homes, and many of them, I would say less than a billion, uh, have actually no access to water, not even close to a home. In some African countries, a woman may spend between 1.5 and 2.4 hours a day just to get a few liters of water. Now, despite branding efforts, I don't think that bottled water is a solution to that problem. It is perhaps a transitory solution but not a real solution. Third reason, uh, the environmental impact. I mean, I, I don't have to tell you uh, the amount of plastic that bottled water uh, uh, takes. Uh, fortunately, in many countries, uh, that is recycled. In many others, it is not. Uh, and even in those countries where it is recycled, you have to take into account that bottled water is much more than just recycling. You have to take into account the cost of transportation, refrigeration, and even the cost of recycling. And all that is expensive and energy and emissions intensive. So the environmental footprint of this industry is quite significant. Third, and this is really something that we have to take uh, into consideration, the strategy of some uh, water companies is really to relegate uh, tap water, which for many African communities would be an incredible luxury, but the strategy of these companies is to relegate tap water to uh, showers, dishwashing, and sanitation. 
Here is an honest statement from, uh, it's a well-known statement from a commerce uh, officer. I will not add any comment to that. Now, I was trying to find a, a glass of water uh, during the break, and I only found uh, uh, bottles. Uh, I realized that, of course, there is uh, uh, water in the bathroom, but in the bathroom there are no glasses. Uh, how far are they going with this strategy? I think that they are succeeding. And one important thing to take into account is that changing consumer behavior on the basis of a false and inaccurate idea which consists in saying that bottled water is healthier than the far more regulated, far more regulated tap water, well, that's probably and possibly manipulation. And five reason, uh, the margins are just too high. Uh, you're better off if you're in the water industry than if you are in the oil industry, as a matter of fact. Communities are being uh, much more generous in selling their water than they are generous in selling their oil. Now, these are just five reasons why I think that we should try to link water as a luxury to water as a human need. Now, the next question is how, of course. The idea that I would like to suggest today is, is very simple. Uh, uh, we would simply raise an indirect tax on each purchase of a, of a bottle of water in a developed country. That indirect tax would be very small. I, I put 3%, that's one third of BAT. Uh, but even that very small amount would uh, uh, yield uh, important sums for some water projects. If you take, for instance, uh, Europe alone, which represents 50% of the value of the market of bottled water, which is entirely $100 billion, uh, that would yield 50 billion, uh, and just a 3% of that would be 1.5 billion. Now, imagine what you could do with 1.5 billion uh, in generating infrastructure in a developed world. So really, that 1.5 would be used to the real uh, access to water problem, which is not just bottled water, but uh, uh, access to infrastructure uh, uh, regarding water and sanitation. Now, more specifically, one could think of a number of more specific goals uh, to which these proceeds would be uh, allocated. One would be uh, the protection of the key natural infrastructures that, uh, uh, that regulate the water cycle, uh, you may have heard about wetlands. Here is just one uh, wetland. It's a wetland called floodplain. But these uh, wetlands are very important for groundwater. That, as we saw before, uh, is 30% of basically what we have left. Uh, and that uh, uh, importance uh, is being threatened simply because in the last century, uh, almost 50% uh, of all the wetlands in the world have been destroyed. So I think if there are less wetlands, that's bad for groundwater. Second uh, allocation that I would like to suggest is water solidarity. Many of you probably have heard about uh, the intercity projects between some French cities and some global south cities. In French, they call it the 1% eau, 1% one water. That basically means that a small fraction of all the water bills that are paid in a city are used to develop the infrastructures in a city of the Global South. Not just to buy bottled water and send it uh, uh, to them, but really to develop the infrastructures uh, uh, there. So I think that those types of projects could be financed not just by tap water, as in the intercity projects, but also by, tap wa by bottled water. And third, uh, uh, water research. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the reason why I, I came to this topic is that uh, as a lawyer, I have been trying to develop a framework to uh, manage the ice fresh water resources, the 70% of fresh water that we have in the world, which is iced and melting. So I wanted to develop a, a legal framework to see how to you know, exploit that uh, amount of water which is there melting into the sea. There are some technologies, this is iceberg towing, it sounds a little bit unrealistic, I'm not saying that this is, a, the, is a, you know, the next technology, but there are a number of technologies that could be useful 
to uh, uh, develop the access to water as a human need. One could think, of course, to efficiency into agriculture, uh, agricultural uses of water. One could also think about easily exportable and cheap waste treatment uh, technologies. Now, these are just three uh, 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 potential uh, allocations for the amounts that would be raised. Uh, now, is Switzerland a good place to start? Well, I think it is. And I give you a few uh, reasons why it may be. Uh, first, uh, Switzerland is the home to the main treaty regulating wetlands, the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, which is based in Geneva. Switzerland is also uh, the home to the newly created United Nations platform on water solidarity. And that platform is precisely trying to develop the intercity uh, uh, projects that I mentioned earlier. Third, Switzerland is, as we have seen all over this uh, day, uh, home to fantastic research institutions. And some of these institutions are actually doing work on water technology, and that could be uh, you know, supported either in the form of research funds or even more, venture capital or private equity. And last but not least, of course, Switzerland is home to one of the main water companies, uh, uh, which could, uh, you know, participate in this project. Now, <laughs> of course, not everybody will be happy about uh, the, the, this idea of, uh, of a tax. But again, it's not about sermonizing anybody. It is just about linking water as a luxury to water as a human need. Thank you for your attention.